I'm Mehdi Hassan. After two days, hours of harrowing security video and a connect the dot of more than five years of growing violent rhetoric, the House managers rested their case early in the second impeachment trial of Donald J. Trump. Today, as they concluded their presentations, these House Democrats, the prosecutors in this trial, tried to lay out how Trump's actions leading up to January the 6th and his lack of remorse afterwards make him a continuing danger. During his remarks, lead manager Jamie Raskin said the insurrection was not an aberration, but the culmination of years of Trump incitement. The insurrection was the most violent and dangerous episode so far in Donald Trump's continuing pattern and practice of inciting violence. So if you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. Okay? Just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. Jews will not replace us! I think there's blame on both sides. But and you I also had people that were very fine people on both sides. By April, Trump's rhetorical attacks and name calling turned to calls for mass mobilization of his supporters. This was a sign of things to come. This Trump inspired mob may indeed look familiar to you. Confederate battle flags, MAGA hats, weapons, camo army gear just like the insurrectionists who showed up and invaded this chamber on January 6th. Is there any political leader in this room who believes that if he is ever allowed by the Senate to get back into the Oval Office, Donald Trump would stop inciting violence to get his way? Would you bet the lives of more police officers on that? President Trump declared his conduct totally appropriate. So, if he gets back into office and it happens again, we'll have no one to blame but ourselves. Congressman Jamie Raskin there. We also heard from House Manager Congresswoman Diana DeGette for the first time today. She documented how rioters echoed Trump's words as they stormed the Capitol, saying they were there at the president's command. They said what Donald Trump said and they echoed each other. Stand back and stand by. Stop the steal. Fight like hell. Trump sent us. We are listening to Trump. All of these people who have been arrested and charged, they're being accountable, held accountable for their actions. Their leader, the man who incited them, must be held accountable as well. And outside of the Senate chamber, a sign that this is a body and indeed a building still recovering over a month later. The final pane of damaged glass in the Capitol center doors was replaced this morning by the architect of the Capitol. Congressman Dean Phillips is asking that the broken panel be preserved and displayed as a reminder of those horrific events and of the seeming fragility of our democracy. Joining me now, Joyce Vance, a former U.S. attorney and an NBC News contributor. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. Do you think the House manager's case was as strong today as it was yesterday when they revealed all that new surveillance video and police audio? Uh, some people were suggesting maybe they should have just wrapped up last night. Well, that makes sense, I think, from an emotional impact point of view. Yesterday was a very impactful day. House managers did something that you almost never see happen on Capitol Hill. They managed to keep some secrets. And so we saw a video that revealed details that people were unaware of, and they were shocking, and they were compelling. Today, the House managers had a little bit of a different job. They needed to dot the I's and cross the T's and make legal arguments, drawing inferences from the evidence. So, so that part of prosecutive work is always maybe a little bit less compelling. It's nonetheless very important, and, and we know that, Mehdi, because at the end, when we have Congressman Raskin explaining that there's a difference between impeachment and a criminal trial, and he then launches into an explanation of why this is a high crime and misdemeanor, that level of argumentation had to be made today. Yes. 
It's a very good point because people still think of impeachment as a legal process. Obviously, it has legal elements. It's a trial, but it is a very political act. And it's, you're not supposed to convict people beyond reasonable doubt. That's not the bar uh, in the Senate. Given that, do you think, and this is a $64,000 question, do you think they made a strong enough case to sway enough Republicans to convict? So, you know, Senator Whitehouse this morning said that if this was a case in a criminal court, that Trump and his lawyers would have been in to see the prosecutors this morning looking for a plea deal. It's an incredibly strong prosecutive case on the law. But as you point out correctly, this is not a trial that's about the law. This is a trial that's largely a political device. And the unfortunate development we see here, and frankly, this has been the case in prior impeachment situations, is that this is less about getting to the truth. This is less about holding the president accountable and more about political tribalism. So there's still, still some speculation yeah. about whether enough Republicans might be willing to change sides. Perhaps some of them will stay home and allow the Democrats to get to two thirds. That seems very unlikely to me. I think we'll see a, a replay of the outcome of the last impeachment exercise. Yeah, although last time around Mitt Romney, one person voted for it a year ago on the Republican side. This time we're pretty sure it'll be more than one. The question is, will it be five, six? Could they get to 10? Could they get to double digits? Uh, unlikely, but you never know. Uh, the Republicans, well, too hard to read their minds. Uh, the Trump defense begins its case tomorrow. Uh, we can likely expect, Joyce, some whataboutism when it comes to the topics of uh, violent rhetoric or incitement. They'll say, well, the Democrats did it, et cetera, et cetera. What do they need to do, though, to convincingly make their own case? All that they're really doing here is giving Republicans who don't want to convict the president an off-ramp, an excuse that's colorable for not voting to convict. So I suppose they don't have to do it very compellingly. And that's a good thing for them because all of the defenses that are available are incredibly weak. This whataboutism comparison to the Black Lives Matter movement is a, a non-starter for anyone who's capable in, of engaging in logic because in that situation, there were some opportunistic ev events involving violence, limited, rare, given the overall yeah. peacefulness of those protests. And singularly, none of those events were organized by a president who was trying to overturn the results of an election he had lost to hang on to power. So good luck with the comparison there. Yeah, there were no politicians pulling, uh, pushing those events. And of course, uh, the Antifa folks are called anarchists uh, for a reason. Uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, who was lead impeachment manager at Trump's uh, first impeachment trial uh, last year, he said this about having witnesses back then. Trial without witnesses, no trial at all. You either have a trial or you don't. And if you're going to have a real trial, you need to hear from the people who have firsthand information. Joyce, Schiff now says, well, it's a matter of judgment whether we need witnesses. Democrats, House managers don't seem that keen on calling witnesses at all. Isn't that a mistake? Wouldn't their case be bolstered by having Capitol Police officers, Hill staffers, even some of the rioters themselves testify? These are two very different scenarios, impeachment one and impeachment two. In the impeachment two case, the American people saw the evidence. They heard from the witnesses because we all saw this happen in real time. It's a very different kind of a case. And because the video is so accessible and because the Senate jury consists of witnesses and victims, there's perhaps a little bit less reasoning for the Senate to hear from witnesses. I think you could make the argument that for the American people that might be important. And I would certainly like to hear from people who worked in the Capitol, from staffers, from support workers, from janitorial staff who had to hide in the closets, from Capitol police officers. That would run the risk of drawing out the proceedings, making them more lengthy. So perhaps a decision was made to avoid doing that. Nonetheless, these proceedings uh, aren't over yet, and one doesn't really know exactly what twists and turns we might see before it gets to the end.
I mean, I take both those points, but, you know, there was an attack on democracy. There's no need to rush through the trial, and uh, government is functioning perfectly well despite the trial. And it's not even just the staffers. I was wondering about, you know, these talk, we talk about, we've heard evidence presented mainly from kind of news sources about the National Guard stand down. What was Donald Trump doing? I want to hear from some of those National Guard officers what was said, what orders or, were given or not given. And that would be useful if we had witnesses. And it's a, I, I think it's a missed opportunity personally. Uh, today, Joyce, we heard from Diana DeGette for the first time, uh, Congresswoman, House Manager, and not only did she establish a pattern of Trump supporters echoing his words during the insurrection, uh, and I've been impressed at the research that they've done, to be honest, the House Managers, how many bits of info and sound that they've pulled into this trial. Have a listen to this bit. You want to say that that was a, a mob? You want to say that was a violence? No, sir. No, ma'am. No, we could have a Second Amendment rally on those same steps that we had that rally yesterday. You know, and if we do, then it's going to be a sad day because there's going to be blood running out of that building. But at the end of the day, you mark my word, we will plant our flag on the desk of Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Now, the name Cooey Griffin may sound familiar because he previously faced controversy for a May 2020 video where he said, quote, the only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. Hear it from him yourself. Where I've come to the conclusion that the only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. <laughs> Now, when he said this, President Trump actually retweeted Griffin and thanked him for that sentiment. Coy Griffin, Joyce, is the founder of a group called Cowboys for Trump, and he was arrested for his participation in the Capitol riot. There's also a new court filing today that shows another person charged in the riot at the Capitol, Jessica Watkins, was, quote, awaiting directions from President Trump. Prosecutors say Watkins conspired with members of the Oath Keepers to form, quote, a subset of the most extreme insurgents involved in the Capitol attack. You wrote in USA Today today, today today that domestic terrorism needs to be a top priority do you see the tide turning in the wake of january the 6th so i do see the tide turning one of the important developments at doj is that once uh, judge garland merrick garland is confirmed we will have someone in the attorney general's office who understands domestic terrorism who was involved in the prosecution of the oklahoma city bombing as was the nominee for Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco. These are people who are so steeped in, in this problem that they will undoubtedly uh, do what my former colleague Connor Eldridge from Arkansas and I call for in the USA Today piece, which is reinstating a domestic terrorism executive council that works across government to make sure that the priority stays on these issues. Unfortunately, in the wake of 9-11, domestic terrorism became a little bit of the stepchild as we focused our resources on foreign terrorism. Now it's time to, to return domestic terrorism to the prioritization it needs to have if we're all going to remain safe. Yeah, let's see what happens. Joyce Vance, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.